we're getting down into now, and, and I really want to transition into, well, what so, are some practicals for discipleship in the emerging generation? But I want to hit one more thing before we do, which is this idea, you know, in, in the book that I wrote with Banning Liebscher called Revival Culture, we talk a lot about missiology for the emerging generation. Okay. In other words, you know, we have miss missiological principles that guide us when we go to another language group or when we go to some primitive tribe in some jungle somewhere. Um, but we need to take those same principles and kind of bring them over into post-Christian America, you know, yeah. or let's say Europe or whatever. In other words, yeah. we need to see that the people we're trying to reach are a very different subculture than we are as Christians. Okay. So one of the keys to missiology is understanding the kingdom longings of the people you're seeking to reach. How has the Holy Spirit already been working at work in their culture to excite certain levels of interest or certain levels of hunger or certain levels of longing in their hearts that will actually match certain aspects of the gospel? Okay. And so can you go through maybe a few of those right now? What do you see? You know, we talked about the need for absolute truth, but that's a, that's almost a non sequitur because they say they don't want it, but actually they need it, but they don't know that they need it. So it's kind of like saying, eat your vegetables. You know, if we're, right. if we're saying that, what are some of the key longings that you see like community or, or let's say, um, affirmation or you know what what would be some of the things that you're seeing in the emerging culture mm -hmm. that yeah. would match uh the kingdom uh some uh let's say assets that we can bring yeah first we we have to acknowledge that there is a uh, there are subcultures within an within an emerging culture right so yeah. so what i mean by that is very much what i'm seeing from those in the church in the emerging generations and those outside of the church in the emerging generation, the longing is the same, but it presents itself in somewhat different ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So does that make sense? Yeah. Because I can I can tell you all day about the 20 year olds I know in the church and I will tell you they will work 10 times harder than most generations I've seen, just being honest. Uh, they, they want to serve, they are, they will go and we always say, bring in the young people. They have the energy. They will stack chairs till one or two in the morning. When I am like going out of the conference, Jews on here, she she's been traveling with me for almost two years. We go to a conference. I'll pray for about 30 minutes and then I'm, I'm tired and Jew will be out there nonstop. The church will go, are you ready to leave? And I'm like, Jew will literally be prophesying till one o'clock in the morning. Like she will wow. go out there and, and, and because she's sold out for the Lord. Right. So you can't take that that culture emerging generation inside the church and necessarily compare it to the one outside of the church, right? So that, that is a, a difference in subculture, but what I find is the longing is the same. So one of those is, um, and, and uh, okay, let me give a story first and then I'll, I'll explain it. Yesterday, I got a text from my sister-in-law and it was a picture uh, from my nephew and he had to draw, what do you wanna be when you grow up? He's six years old and he said a doctor. Now that's real normal, right? But statistically right now, by the time he's 10 years old, that will not be what he wants to be anymore. Do you know what it'll be? YouTuber, influencer. That's right. TikTok star, right? Statistically, by the time he is 10 years old now, he no longer will wanna be a doctor or a teacher or a lawyer, which is what we all wanted to be when we were kids, right? He's going to want to be an influencer of some sort that that is a cultural value across the board in the church and out of the church. And I would say it, it can be very dangerous when it's being perverted by the enemy in the way that it is right now. And, and so when I look at kids like you that are 19, 20 and 21 and they're going, I want to be a leader in the church. I'm like, let's define leader. It's not having a million followers on TikTok or being the next Mike Todd and having, you know, 3 million people logging. That's not, that's not what we're aspiring to be, right? Because Jesus said that the greatest is the servant of all. So we have, we have, even inside the church, we have confused what real influence is. We've confused what real success is. Outside of the church, we have the same issue, but the longing is very much the same. And that's to be seen, to be known, to be great, to make an impact. Um, how many of you guys, uh, Mike Bickle wrote a book called The Se Seven Longings of the Human Heart, came out in the early 2000s. Incredible book. Let me ask you the question. Have those longings changed? Wow. No. 
So here's the discrepancy that we're struggling with. I talk to leaders and they're like, oh man, celebrity culture. Everybody just wants to be famous now. That's all. No, no, no. We just made it really easy for people to get famous. The longing was still there. When I was a kid, before I knew Jesus, all I wanted to be was a professional basketball player. And I would dream of everybody knowing my name. And I'm going to play the WNBA had come out, right? I'm going to play in the WNBA and I'm going to have a jersey with my name on the back. The longing was the same. Wow. I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be known. I wanted to make an impact. The vehicle has changed. Now I want to be famous on TikTok. I want to be famous on Instagram. I want to be famous. So, so the vehicle has changed, but the longing has not changed. And as a church, we've got to learn to see that longing and go, actually, there is a godly longing in that. Bill wrote a book, Bill Johnson wrote a book called Born for Significance. And he really addresses some of that in a beautiful way. It's not killing the longing. It's appropriating it in the right location. I think God has put it inside of us all to want to make an impact because you were meant to. Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. It just isn't supposed to be corrupted by pride like we've allowed it to be. It's not necessarily supposed to look like the the identity that we've put on it. And so to me, and I'm going to be a repetitive uh, ad nauseum about this topic, I think discipleship cures most of the ails we're dealing with in the church. I really do. Because I can sit down with these kids and when I notice something in them, that that is hey that's actually a real godly longing i see inside of you i just see it manifesting in a pretty negative way let's redirect that thing oh, right let's great. let's put that where it's supposed to be uh just because jews on here so it's easy to pick on her she has something inside of her that loves to argue it drives me insane i absolutely can't stand it it's this like constant pushing up against a wall And when I was praying about this months ago, the Lord spoke to me and he's like, yeah, I put that inside of her. I'm like, no way. There's no, there is no way that that's from you. He's like, she's going to make a really good leader one day when she learns where to stand up and who to stand up to right now. It's misappropriated. It's put, it's put on the wrong person. It's put in the wrong direction. She'll tell you, she's been working on this for months. We we have been talking about this. It, It is a beautiful God given thing inside of her to lead. And she will lead with strength. She will lead in confidence. She will know how to stand up when culture tells her lies, but she's got to learn where to appropriate that thing, right? It's not at me. Do you hear me? It's not at me. (laughs) There there is an appropriate place to put that. And so discipleship allows me to see that thing and go, oh, I see the God, I see the God thread in that. Now I need to help disciple her on where to put it. Wow. Even for these kids that want to be famous TikTokers. And, and I go, wow, wow. I see this thing inside of you. You want to make an impact. You know, God actually wants you to make an impact too. Let's talk about what that looks like in the Bible. How, how did Jesus make an impact? Well, he laid his life down. He actually didn't toot his own harm. So let's, let's, start, let's start modeling Jesus in that. And we redirect that godly longing in them and put it in the right place. But you can't do that in a once a month class. You do that in life-on-life discipleship. 